<laughs> Woo! <laughs> How's everybody doing? Okay, we are going to do part two, right? Of uh, compatibility of sign. You know, I've been I've gotten so much pressure about the fact that um, you know, people really want me to focus on whether it's compatible or not. You know, the the verdict is still not out on that one. <laughs> Hold on one second. I gotta get my drink on. Okay, this is a black Russian martini. Now, it's my second drink, and that's it. I'm done for the evening. I've been doing pretty good. I've been doing pretty good. My health is important. I've been listening to you guys. I'm going to stick around. I ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Oh, God, heavenly. <laughs> and it's my only vice. But you know what? I tell you, of all the drugs that are out there, marijuana, cocaine, crack, heroin, the one that will do you in will be the alcohol. It is the number one killer. It really is. It really is. So, you know, I don't got a problem, nor do I use these other drugs, other than, you know, well, weed and my drink on, you know? But, um, let me tell you, I could not have trusted any more lethal combination. Because at least with crack and cocaine, they don't take you out in a minute. If you do, if you overdose. Heroin, if you shoot it up, or what they call slam, yeah, that'll kill you too. But if you snort it, it's, it won't kill you. But it's still equally destructive. Just like uh, methadone is when it's misused. Um, anything that tears down the body, including um, things like methamphetamines, you know, will can tear down the body. You know, and alcohol is, is, is one of those processes that tears down the body very slowly and gradually. But, enough about that. And some of you guys have been um, co um, complaining about the panning of the camera. And I'm going to try my best not to have that happen. In fact, I think I just did it. I think I just did it. See? Okay. I'm not moving. Okay. So I took care of the situation of the panning and the faith moving back and forth. So now we're going to go to part two of Virgo and Pisces. Two very um, fascinating signs of the Zodiac, which happen to be polar opposites. And we have mentioned in part one that if we, can, we attribute this combination to the planet itself. That we are 70% water, which is Pisces, and we are 30% land, which is Virgo. Okay? And it's mutable Earth because the Earth doesn't stand still, it rotates on its own axis. So there's movement, and that is symbolized by mutable Earth. Okay? Even though the fixity nature and the spherical and morphology nature of our planet stays the same as a globe, which is, a, is attributed to Taurus. Okay? And I'm getting a call. And I wonder what the call is about. Okay? I am talking to uh, Mr. Bruce Lindstedt. He called me while I'm on the air doing Virgo Pisces Part 2. How are you, Mr. Lindstedt? You're on the air. Pretty good. How are you? Oh, very good. Yeah, I'm in the middle of doing this video about Virgo Pisces Part 2. 
and also discussing, you know, more details about the actual interpersonal dynamics of both sides. Can I call you back? Thank you very much. I will be uh, uploading a couple of other ones um, that are still uploading concerning the, the politics of the theory in terms for uh, and what I uploaded was actually the, the art section and how that also happens to be in jeopardy, not just here in terms of it, but across the nation. Uh, there seems to be a lack of interest concerning the dramatic arts and also public art and installation art. And it's amazing that what we find in Chunks for seems to be the same dynamics and issues that we find in the big cities like New York or Boston or LA. Oh god, yeah, wasn't it great? Thank you so much. But I guess I will call you right back as soon as I'm done with this segment, Mr. Blinstead. <laughs> Yes, so I um, understand that um, that now we have um, we have to go into specifics. Now go into verbal patches and understanding the specific details of this combination when we're dealing with the day-to-day -day stuff. How do you get along with a Pisces man or a Pisces woman with a Virgo man or a Virgo woman on the day-to-day -day basis? On the day-to-day -day basis because, you know, romance is great. Now, there's always room for romance. But you also have to deal with the reality of the situation, you know? Are you making enough money? Are the bills getting paid? Is there sufficient communication? You know, you know, it's very easy for this combination to become in, entrenched in a fantasy of idealism because both Virgo and Pisces can be quite idealistic in their approach and also from their own value system. So that means that the relationship that can be fused between these two people has to be very... There has to be a common interest, but also a common need. Now, a lot of people will not talk about the common need. That's the underlying hidden motivation. But the, the want will always be open and obvious if you look close enough. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Now, let us go into some uh, specificities here, okay? First, I, I, th I think it, it, I think it's um, easier to say, or uh, 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 um, uh, it's easier to say. Let's put it that way. It's easier to say that when these two gentle, unassuming signs fall in love, the results can be truly magical, and it is. As opposite signs in the zodiac, Pisces and Virgo compatibility is based on each partner's offering to the other something that they need or something that they lack. You know. So, whatever the need is and whatever the lack is, if they can both fulfill it, that is what's going to make the relationship stick. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's what's going to make the relationship stick, okay? Now, we know that both Pisces and Virgo are extremely attractive-looking signs and people are, that are born under these stars. But, you know, looks can fade away. So, if looks fade away, what do you got? 
what, what, what else is there? Ultra sensitive Pisces finds a partner they can trust and down to earth, honest terms. Very, uh, you have to understand that Pisces is like a sparrow and is vulnerable. Now, don't get me wrong, Pisces can talk a good game. And when push comes to shove, she'll deliver because she's a lot tougher than she appears. But in her heart, that's not who she wants to be. She wants someone else to hold the pillars of Hercules and be strong and, and, and hold her down, have her back. She don't want to be the man and wear the pants, but she'll do it if she has to. Like any other woman, not just Miss Pisces. But you have to understand that that is seldom her luck. Unfortunately, she attracts men that are troubled, have issues, need emotional or psychological repairing themselves. So how can she put her expectations on these men who fall short of her lofty dreams and goals? She has to draw onto her opposite polarity, which is Virgo. Where now she has to put on her thinking cap and be practical and pragmatic and methodical and approach life in an ABC fashion that deals with building with structures and cause and effect and tangible results and analysis. Nothing spiritual or nothing antithetical. Because that doesn't guarantee your survival. But having a methodical ordered system is a guarantee that you will somehow survive. Because if we depend and live our lives in a way that's predictable, it, som it somehow feels safe. And it somehow feels that, you know, familiar until the universe decides otherwise. You see? So... It's a tricky situation because both Virgo and both um, Pisces seek safety and protection, not just from each other, but within each other, you know, and usually react from a fright or flight psychological space, where if something is too overwhelming, they'll bail out. This can happen with Virgo and it can happen with Pisces. So because these two signs have that propensity, it's important that one be strong and one be, well, not as strong, but willing to learn to be strong through the example of the other. You cannot have a situation where you have a weak Pisces and a weak Virgo because then it is a recipe for disaster. Then we have to go into the incompatibility aspect of this combination. But if the two people are strong, well-educated, well-informed, coming from balanced backgrounds, then we can say that this is a compatible sign versus incompatible. It can go either way. And that's what I mean when I define a relationship dynamic as neutral. Because it can go either way. Nothing is sticks and stones because these signs are extremely paradoxical in nature and complex. So there is no real textbook in trying to define to by definition what how each one will act and react. All we can do is present the templates, but the way that they evolve individually is anyone's guess because it's different with culture, race, age, gender, and the conditioning of whatever society you come from, whether it's the Western or the Eastern or the Middle Eastern. And this is where anthropology becomes useful.
because it's not just astrology. All of these dynamics have to be added into the equation for you to get a concise picture of the individual that you're dealing with. I think I heard somebody say, preach, preach, you all need to stop it. But it's true. I mean, let's call it spade a spade. You know, it has to be that way. You know, there's still a lot more to say about this combination. And, oh, great, great. I'm, I'm doing good time. I'm doing good time. It's only 15 minutes. Okay. Now, let's go into, uh, let's go into Virgo a little bit. Okay. Virgo is exceptionally loyal and devoted when in love. The man or the woman, let me tell you, they're not going to cheat on you. If they love you, they're not going to cheat on you. They'll leave you before they cheat on you. That's how loyal they are. They're not going to do that. Okay? And, and, and Virgo is never going to let Pisces down. Now, let me tell you, that's a big deal. Because there are many signs of the Zodiac that will let Pisces down. The only one that will not let Pisces down is Virgo. Arch typically, arch typically. Virgo has her back, protects her. Yeah? Yeah? It's true. I tell you. So, Virgo is not going to let Pisces, you know, down. Okay? As the healer of the Zodiac, Virgo helps Pisces to face their sensitivity Head on and provides a grounding and influence, and often an overwhelming uh, um, sense of groundness, in order that she may develop a sense of permanence. Because, you know, Pisces might sometimes psychologically be adrift, but that's okay, being the fish of the ocean, that's gonna happen. Everything has an ebb and a flow. The Pisces woman or the man should not feel uh, lost or uncomfortable if they don't know what direction in life to go to. They're not supposed to know, which is why they don't know. And in the process of them not knowing is where their beauty and their genius emerges. Because now... They are an open slate that the universe is using to help heal other people with no order, with no with no rank, with no structure, but just aimless. Remember, Virgo rules structure and, and, and order. Pisces represents the opposite of that. So sometimes Pisces has to be lost. Because in her, in her being lost, she finds God. And she connects with the divine. You know, there are many stories in the Bible and in antiquity where men had to be reduced to their egos before they became instruments of the Creator. Like Aaron, Joseph, Moses, okay? Uh, Aurora Master, Krishna. Buddha, Gandhi, they all had to be submitted, subjugated. The eagles had to be crushed as men and women, including Indira Gandhi, which not much is spoken of, to become the great personages that we learn and, and, and revere to this day. But understand that that takes a price, and that is all symbolized by Pisces.
So for you to understand the Pisces, you're going to have to understand and sort of accept and grasp. Because you can't accept something if you don't grasp the concept of it. You're going to have to accept the concept of healing. Healing. And both Pisces and Virgo are signs of great healing. But this is more as a visceral end result. It's not that the Virgo man or the Virgo woman actually seek out to be healers themselves. They become healers by default, whether they, whether they want to or not. Because their mere pain and their mere uh, experience of pain becomes a badge of um, austerity. It becomes a badge of authority where others can look at and engage. Well, you know what? If this person can do it, if this person can survive this, then I can. So if anything, if you see a Pisces in a long-lasting relationship, regardless of what sign it is, there's a lot to be said about that. It means that at some, at some point, the light and the shadow of the personality and ego of the individual has reached a point of balance. So now, there can be a, a, a perfect relationship dynamic that can exist between a Pisces and their significant other. It doesn't have to be Virgo. It could be any sign of the Zodiac. Because you have to understand that Pisces symbolizes the cosmic mirror. She's going to project onto you who you are. Both what you see about yourself and what you don't see about yourself. And if you're going to stay with this woman, you have to work through those issues within you that you're bringing to the table that you thought you had safely hidden away. Well, guess what? Miss Pisces is going to see deep, deep, deep into the recesses of your soul and know exactly what the fuck is wrong with you. Whether you accept it or not, be careful with Pisces. <laughs> be careful with Pisces. You're not going to be able to win with this woman. She's closer to God than all of us. So she's going to see. Don't fuck with Miss Pisces. And don't fuck with Virgos either. That's the opposite. If they can see, we can see too. But we can link it to the modern reality where well, Pisces can link it. They need us to put the pictures together. And that can make us a very formidable couple. It's another power couple dynamic. Provided, of course, if both couples know each other very well. And, and, and they know who they are as individuals. Because if they don't know who they are as individuals, then it's not going to work either. This is why we have to put this combination as neutrality. Instead of compatibility or incompatibility of signs. Because it can go either way. This is one of those combinations that confers that type of neutrality. Okay? Okay, so, having said that, we have to ask ourselves the question, who is the boss? Who is the boss? If we're dealing with <coughs> a Pisces woman and a Virgo man, it varies. You have mutable water and mutable earth. Virgo can be strong this season, but then weak the next season, which means that Pisces will be strong. With mutable signs, you could be weak and strong and switch back and forth. So it becomes a question of relativity. So then we cannot add this uh, signature to this combination because it's too mutable. Water is mutable and so is Earth. And the combination of the two signs is too mutable, it's too changeable. So therefore, it can go either direction. 
And that can be very positive in its own right because it means that the relationship will be exciting. It will never be boring. And it will be something that you can write to your children in the days of old. And we're done with this combination.